and just take a look at this right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the bulls and bears preferences again. Looking at this chart, bulls and bears arrows in red. So far, not bad. Actually, they're pretty, pretty good. Um, we've got signals what? Here, 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 and here. Okay, these are pointing up. Uh, see, down, up, down, up. We've got, if we pull out our trusty dollar calculator, uh, here we've got a um, move that goes down all the way to about uh, $1,000 of profit, um, but we would need to use a trailing stop in order to get out before we receive the other signal. If we went strictly by buy sell arrows, which I tend to do, by the way, um, although if you follow with trailing stops, it's probably going to give you some better results and protect you and taking those profits, but if we're using strictly buy sell signals, Say I went uh, short here and then went long here, we would take in a whipsaw going down from this price to here, and then another almost, let's see what would that be, about break even right there, a little bit of a loss. So, yet again, I want to fine tune it. I, I want this better. So, I'm going to go over to the bulls and bears preferences, and I'm going to switch over to time frames that I like, um, excuse me, formulas that I like. I'm going to try progressive. I'm going to adjust my sensitivity a little bit and I'm also going to trigger some of these filters here alright so using this new set of sensitivity just going through and adjusting I actually use the progressive I drag the sensitivity slider back and forth without even looking at the value in the top left and I actually ended up with the 72 again just the same as the default However, using the progressive and just the inside days filter, this section earlier where I didn't like the results I had uh, because my signals were coming too late in the moves, I've actually improved the signals on all of these. Um, this signal to go long, I got about mm, four price bars earlier, which means I'm going to be getting a better fill price. This sell signal right here, I got several price bars earlier, and I'm going to be getting a better fill price there. I'm also, let's see what, one full price bar earlier on this bar, so again, better fill price, and right here, better fill price again. Um, so that is closer to what I'd actually use when working in this chart, and then at this point, I just wait for my next signal. Uh, this one buy signal right here lasted, what, how much profit? $2,000 profit? Um, even if we used a calculated stop loss, like possibly the blue light, we could trigger here, re-enter. Oh, I like both. We could, actually, you know what I would like to use? Let me uh, switch directions here for just a moment. Because we keep getting these retracements, and if we did want to use something like a trailing stop to follow along, I'd probably want to use something that uh, tries to avoid those retracements. And I really like, as a tool, the um, ATR stop. If I right-click, chart overlays, and click on ATR stop, I like the ATR stop because it's more friendly towards retracements than some of the other technical indicators for following. Um, if you're following the market with just a dollar's back, um, or if you're using just you know a number of ticks back or pips back, it's just going to keep on following. Um, let's take a look at this trend right here. I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to drag this up just a little bit. All right, let's take a look at this signal right here. A signal to go long. If we were to use, let's see, using my trusty little dollar calculator, let's say that I followed this market with using about the average bar height. We'll say I followed it $225 back, okay? And I placed in an order to go long at the open of this bar right here. I'll even make it green, okay? Let's say that I went in long at this price right here, which would have been the open of the price bar after I got the buy signal. And then let's say that I put in a trailing stop to follow below that fill price. And we'll say that I set it to follow, if I grab that about right, about, let's say, $225 back from the market. All right, interesting thing about using um, a uh, dollars back or a pip trailing stop. Market starts moving up. Say the market moves all the way up to right here, the close of this price bar, which means that if we were following $225 back, our stop loss at that point 
would have been right up here. And we would have had some profit at that point as well. We would have locked in about $200 worth of profit, okay? We were long at this bar, short at this bar. Um, this goes all the way up to here, and we keep on following the market, and it's going to be following the market prices as it moves forward, and that includes if it increases in price, say, all the way up to here, okay? Even though it closes lower, the dollars back is just going to keep on following the market, so it actually would have moved up to right about here, okay? Which means that on this price bar, we would have triggered and we'd have been taken out much too early, really. It really is much too early um, because we were falling back either too close or because the market just came back and retraced a little bit. Uh, what can be nice with using tools like ATR Stop or even uh, a jump trail can be nice for this as well is that we specifically will tell it that we will only continue to trail or move forward as long as we keep getting new highs. Okay? That means that the tool like the ATR Stop, which is this little set of yellow dots that follows along with the market, if the market stops making new highs, it's going to hold its position, which means that if you have a market that does retracements in your moves, which they almost always do, you will hold your price position until you get a new high and you get a uh, breakup. See this right here, this price bar where it comes all the way up to here and we close higher, um, I think, actually not higher, but we actually make a new high, higher than these previous bars. Well, it had been flat for quite a while. As soon as we got that price bar, it jumps up. We get the next price bar with another new high, jumps up again, and it continues to jump forward as the market makes new highs, which means that it's going to try and protect you against these retracements and you're going to stay in longer. In this case, with the ATR stop, I think you actually would have made it all the way up to right here before you actually would have hit the market and closed out, as opposed to just a straight dollars back that could have triggered all the way back at this price. Even if you did double uh, that amount for a trailing stop, say you followed at 550 back, you still would have been uh, hit right here, and then you also would have taken an even less profit. Um, so, for that reason, using these calculated stop loss tools can actually be very helpful in that way. Um, so you can actually uh, follow along and not get taken out. If you notice that your ATR stop is still uh, taking you out a little bit too early, fine tune it. Um, if you go over to your ATR stop here on the right, you have options of the number of periods used for the ATR, and also you have your stop factor. Um, and you can go through and fine tune it. Um, let's see. Three is a little bit too far away. Two maybe just a little bit too close. So you might want to try something like 2.5, okay? 2.5, we actually stay a little bit further back, but not as much as the three, and it's looking a little bit more healthy on that follow. Uh, but really, in the end, that's going to be up to you on your risk appetite, how far back you're willing to hold your stop. Um, but uh, the ATR stop can be really nice for that. Um, what I like even more than the ATR stop is using the jump stop. Uh, the jump stop it's just, well, I should say trailing jump stop. I'm going to delete all my drawn tools, not the chart this time. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit. And let's talk for just a moment about using a jump stop. Okay? Um, let's say that I'm going to go ahead and move my chart back in time. Um, that's something I do in the development and for these webinars. Just so you know, you can't move the chart back in time when you're running yours. Sorry. Uh, we can't do it. It's live, real money trading. There's too much risk if someone moves a price part back one and then forgets about it and uh, their uh, stop loss order stop trailing because they're not getting new price bars. It opens a whole bag of worms we're not going to touch. So I can move the price bars back in time uh, because we're doing these webinars, but when you're running live, um, you can't. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, what would happen if you use something like a jump stop or a jump stop trail with this long trend that we had right here. Let's go back to the price bar where we got the signal. We got a signal. It said go long. So at that point we could place in an order to go long this market on the open of the next price bar. Uh, so we go through and say that we're going to buy once we get an open on the next price bar. And at that point, we could also set something fun like a trailing jump stop. We could put in a trailing jump stop placed just below as a stop loss. We could set it, say, its initial price. We could put, if I were looking at this, I would say, what, maybe 30 ticks back, something around that um, from the open the next bar. Let's go ahead and step it forward. 
All right. So it actually opened a uh, down.